Sorry about that, folks. Minor business to attend to. All right, let's see. It seemed odd that we were being put in the hands of a man who had never run a campaign before. You know, it seemed odd that uh, Sarah Palin was the vice president when she has virtually no political experience, but whatever. Andrew seemed like a nice guy, and it wasn't my call. I figured there were pros that they knew what they were doing. It ended up being a learning experience for all of us. Chapter 5 of Chapter 4. In the sweet... In the suite, a beautiful, helpful lady named Coral helped set up a sewing machine to tear the clothes of the campaign supplies. Nicole had a hand in hiring a team of New York stylists, one of whom was apparently worked for some big-name newscasters, including Katie Couric. We well, had a few minutes, and the stylist helped me take a closer look at the clothes. The price tags almost knocked my eyes out. I remember seeing one rather plain-looking blazer, and I thinking, that must cost more than a semester at the University of Alaska. I noticed that there were, instead of a decent seven pair dollar pair of nylons, one fancy package price was red seventy dollars. I hated to break into them, but I doubt I'd even wear them. It was still warm out, after all. The campaign had also purchased big red pearls for the girls to wear on the night of my speech. After the big night, I made my daughters put them back in the store boxes and everything back to the campaign staffers. We didn't need fancy jewelry. Not long after Ted and I still married, we were married, we bought a $35 wedding band from the street vendor in Hawaii, and it still works. At one point, Willow asked the campaign staffer, who's paying for all this? Don't know, but it's all been taken care of. Yeah, that's real responsible. It took, after my parents arrived for the convention, the campaign ads took Dad down to the neon markets to browse $200 ties and $350 shoes. Seriously, who needs to buy all this shit? Ever the practical and frugal run, run one, yeah, frugal one, he too asked who was paying for all this and was told the same thing. It's all taken care of. It's part of the convention. No one had a good answer either to a more general question. Why is the Palin family being made ever, er, made over for the two days of convention anyway? With smiles on our faces, we asked, do we really look that bad? Mm, probably. We felt like we were starting an episode of What Not to Wear. Was that a joke? Because... I don't think it was that funny. And I don't think anyone else did. I was told that Nicole worked with the stylist at CBS. She also assured me that all candidates traveled with hair and makeup artists, and eventually introduced me to Amy and Angela, the talented hair and makeup girls. Okay, let's see. More stuff about makeup, blah, blah, blah. I don't freaking care about her doing her makeup and hair. My God, why is this necessary? Uh, all right, let's see. They wanted me to turn slowly in front of mirrors to make sure the clothes fit perfectly, but I had a convention events to attend, as well as opportunities for once-in-a-lifetime meetings with various people in group. Also, I wanted to study John's foreign policy positions with Randy and Steve, so while being tailored to within a millimeter, I talked over my shoulder with them and their other advisors. It was all very different from my inaugural ball in Alaska, where I had run out into the final two hours, literally to buy a pair of shoes for the grand event. I felt all the fuss over clothes with a colossal waste of time, and I was usually ready to bolt during fittings, thinking, okay, yep, that's fine, gotta go. I wondered who strategized this part of the campaign. Likewise, I knew it wasn't John. Never before had I been involved in a campaign that placed such an emphasis on packaging. When I ran for office in Alaska, I had written my own script, usually traveled by myself, and obviously wore my own clothes. Now I present myself as what I told people what I believed in. Now I was in the hands of campaign professionals, and it was my first encounter with a unique way of thinking that characterizes this elite and highly specialized guild. In Alaska, we don't really have these kind of people. We feature, uh, these are a feature of national politics. Naturally, though, as the experts, they are be used to being in charge. But no matter how expert any of them was, Nothing had apparently prepared them for the unprecedented onslaught of rumors, lies, and innuendo that packaging would have on my candidacy. Gee, that sounded like another shot at the press. Maybe I should have a counter going on. Okay, that was shot number two. I wasn't used to having beautiful hotels enjoyed on the campaign trail. In Wasilla, we had the best western inn on Lake Lucille. We used it for year, yeah, years. For everything from town hall meetings to Wasilla Warriors High School Prom. It was a gorgeous view. Okay, don't care, don't care. Yeah, I'm not going to read all this crap if it's not relevant to the story. 
bouncy skimming, skimming, skimming. Special wasn't in. Okay, there we are. Wake. All right. I especially wasn't used to the overtop perks, such as flat screen TV inside my bathroom mirror. What? An innovation that drew cries of way cool from my girls. Cool was not what I thought, though. On the morning of September 1st, I was standing on the bathroom, brushing my teeth, enjoying the novelty of watching the news at the same time. Wait, I thought you said it wasn't cool. When I crawl, scroll across the bottom of the screen, Breaking news, Vice Presidential Candidate Governor Sarah Palin's teenage daughter, Bristol, is pregnant. I nearly gagged on my toothbrush. Oh, God, I thought, here we go. Hey, that's exactly what I said when I started reading this book. The news, of course, wasn't a surprise to her family and press, and it certainly wasn't a surprise to the campaign. Oh, my God, this is like the fourth time you've mentioned this. All right, you know it's coming. There is no way out of here. It will be dark soon. There is no way out of here. It'll be dark soon. No. I knew now we would be playing defense on an issue that I would rather have not been out front on. It surprised me that the campaign, which had the information in the first place, had no plans to raise it in a constructive way. After all, this is an issue that affects far too many American teenagers. I also recall Barack Obama chastising a reporter in a nationally televised interview, insisting that his family was off its limits, and the press obeyed him. They left his kids alone and generally have been the tradition. I couldn't recall much scrutiny from any of the candidates' children, Bidens, McCain's, and I was glad for them, but nothing about the campaign would be like others. I walked out into a large street just with Maria. A shy young staffer assigned the VP media team entered the room. Headquarters, Maria told me, had elected to issue a statement in response to the news report about Bristol, in my name. She didn't know who had written it. She handed me a printout. Statement of Governor Alaska Palin on the pregnancy of her daughter, Bristol. We are blessed with five wonderful children who we all love with our heart. They mean everything to us. Our beautiful daughter, Bristol, came to us with news as parents. We knew we would make it would make her grow up faster than we ever would have planned. We're proud of this Bristol's decision to have her baby and even prouder to become grandparents. I was pretty shocked. Bristol and the young man are, she will marry are going to... I stopped reading. I looked up at Marina. No. That is certainly not the message we want to send. We are not giddy happy about our unwed teenage daughter being pregnant, as the press release suggested. Tom and I were proud of Bristol's selfless decision to have her baby and determination to deal with the difficult circumstance. Wait, are you... So you're proud of it, but you're not happy about it. Okay, Todd and I were proud of her selfless decision to have her baby and determination to deal with their difficult circumstances by taking responsibility for actions, but in no way did I want to send the message that teenage pregnancy was something to endorse, much less glamorize. Yeah, kind of like what Juno did. I got my pen and marked up the printout, drafting a more serious statement that balanced concern with the message for of love, my strong but truthfully embarrassed daughter. I knew we only had one shot to get the right message concerning this life-changing event. Then I handed it back to Maria, who related to the headquarters. My cell phone rang. It was Bristol. Mom, the whole world knows about this. It's bad enough that Wasilla knows, but now the whole world knows. I know, honey, it's going to be okay. I'm really sorry. Bristol sounded heartbroken. Why is this even news? I'm not running for everything. Why do I have to do... What do I have to do with this? You're right, you're right. This shouldn't be top news. I'm sorry this is. We're going to get through this together, all right? Silence on the other end. Punctuated by deep breaths. Bristol? Okay. I love you, honey. You're brave and you're strong. It's going to be okay. Thanks, Mom. I love you, too. But I hate this morning, and I feel like I'm going to throw up. Thanks for the visual. I really hate this book, and I think I'm going to throw up. I hang up the phone, and we turn to the television of the living room, just in time to see a new scroll at the bottom of the screen. Governor Sarah Palin on teen daughter's pregnancy. We're proud of Bristol's decision to have her baby, and proud of her to become grandparents. Yeah, now I'm a little confused, too.